In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Welcome to this service for Ascension Day. It has been two months to the date since I last presided and uh, since I was last in this beautiful church. And although the building is empty, it feels full as I imagine this beautiful parish on whose behalf I take communion today. There is an order of service that supports this act of worship. And later on in the service, there will be an opportunity for you to pray a prayer for spiritual communion. And I'll explain more when that time comes. But in the meantime, welcome. Welcome to this service for Ascension Day. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we have been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb and his defeat of the power of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today, we recall how he left this earth and returned to his Father ascending into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers, trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule. Let us hear the story of his parting. We begin with a prayer of preparation. I just invite you to find a still place within as we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm now going to pray the collect. This is a prayer that will be being said all around the Church of England today on Ascension Day. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we, in heart and mind, may also ascend and with him continually dwell who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to listen to some passages from Scripture, and then Rosemary is going to offer us a reflection. A reading from the Book of Acts. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. 
After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intensely up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello. Today I'm reflecting a little on perspective. The last, this time last year, I was on holiday at Port Levin in Cornwall with my friend, and we went to a lovely local village church called St Briarca for an Ascension Day service. After that, we went for a walk on the clifftops with our families at Kyant's Cove. It was beautiful. Yeah, there were breathtaking views, gorgeous weather, and we were happy being out and about, talking to other people, standing, chatting, just looking at the sea. Today, I'm sat at home, unable to go out, looking out of my window at an overgrown tree. A different view, a different perspective, a different time. I wonder what the disciples were thinking and feeling as they stood watching Jesus ascending. We're told about the situation in two ways. In one version, at the end of Luke, Jesus is carried up as he was blessing them. And then they worshipped and returned to the temple with joy, blessing God. They were active, full of praise, energetic. In the other version, at the beginning of Acts, Jesus is taken up, away from them. And the disciples stand watching, waiting, until they are spoken to by two men in white, who give them reassurance that Jesus will come again. For me, this seems less active, more passive, as if they were stunned by events. I find these two different perspectives very compelling. They prompt me to think about the mixed emotions that I feel about our current situation. Everybody is experiencing it in different ways. And those ways are all valid. There is sadness and there is joy. There is passivity and there is action. There is excitement and there is fear. There is longing. None of those feelings are wrong or right. They just are. And God is present in all of them. The disciples had just lived through a traumatic event. Some 40 days ago, their lives had changed. Jesus had been telling them that this would happen that he would suffer, he would die, and on the third day he would rise again. They had been shocked, grief-stricken. And then, unbelievably perhaps, Jesus was with them, teaching and sharing meals. They had questions. Jesus reminded them of the truths of the past, his actions and teachings before his crucifixion and resurrection. I love the phrase that's used. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. I often have questions and frequently don't understand. Reading the Bible is just one way that we can explore issues and ask, where is Christ in this situation? If we were able to sit together and talk about it, I wonder how many different ways we would have to try to connect to God, how many different things we would come up with to 
talk about situations where God is, how we respond. Perhaps people make that connection through prayer. For some, it might be when they're walking or running in the park. It could be while sewing or doing the washing up or just sitting and looking at the sky, taking time to just be. I feel so much of our attitude comes from our perspective. How open are we to new experiences or to change? It can be difficult, incredibly challenging to be ready to deal with the unknown. Part of the story of the disciples then relates to their future. We are invited into that story at a point of change. Jesus reminds his disciples that he has to go and he tells them to stay, to wait, until they have received what the Father has promised. He's referring to the Holy Spirit. To wait, to be clothed with power from on high. Jesus also reminds the disciples that they are witnesses. Again, there are two perspectives. A witness sees something, it's passive, but a witness is also called to speak, to tell of the event they have seen or the feeling they have felt, to be active. The seeing or feeling happens first. For the disciples, they were reminded that they are witnesses to all that Jesus has done. And they are told that the gift of the Holy Spirit will enable them to become active witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Where do we witness God's glory and love in our world? Are we aware of moments in our days when we feel God's presence? And if so, what is our response? I have been feeling very blessed since Easter, experiencing a sense of peace and the presence of God, which I appreciate might not have been felt by others. As we now approach a new time of change and transition, I reflect that Jesus is here with us now because of then and there. I cannot help but see parallels in where we are today. We have to wait, watching, to get ready for change, like the original disciples, not understanding or being able to predict what the future holds. We are told to wait, to see what happens. But we are also told that as Jesus ascended into heaven, he was blessing his disciples. And we know that that blessing continues to us, his disciples today. Even though we can't physically see Jesus as they did, we can witness his presence in different ways, his impact on our daily lives. And we are called to share that witness with others in our own individual, unique ways, just by being us. Jesus has ascended into heaven and in a little time, the gift of the Holy Spirit will come upon those disciples. And we give thanks that from our perspective, this has already happened and we can stand in wonder and give thanks with joy as Jesus ascends. Thank you so much for those words, Rosemary. There's a truth that binds us together and whether we are gathered physically in one sense or we have that feeling of being connected spiritually, we are bound together. There is a truth that sets us free. We declare that truth every time we declare our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because after his most glorious resurrection, he appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, we might also be and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took supper with his friends. He took bread, he gave you thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, with songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Now, being made one by the mysterious power of the Spirit, we pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So in a moment, I'm going to invite you to receive. There's a prayer of spiritual communion that I will lead and say on your behalf. I just invite you to reach out your hands, to have your hands open, to allow that power of the Spirit to reach you, to feed you, to nourish you. The deep that is you, connecting with the deep that is God. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us, that we may live in you. And now the prayer of spiritual communion. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for us all. blood of Christ shed for us all. As our service draws to a close, I'm going to finish with a peace greeting. And it may be that if you are watching this on social media, you might like to put your own peace greeting in the comments section. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice because I am going to the Father. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you.